National Monitoring Program has made San Francisco Bay perhaps the best monitored estuary in terms of water quality in the world. It's a unique collaboration between the regulators, um, the discharger community, and the scientific community. And um, they all work together towards a common goal to collect data and generate information on bay water quality to support management decisions. We've learned a lot over the last 20 years from the uh, different types of cruises that we do on the bay. And um, there are four main ones. Um, and together they constitute our status and trends monitoring program. Um, the first and what was initially the foremost uh, mo most important cruise was the water cruise. In the beginning of the program in the 90s, the, the regulators were really focused on concentrations of contaminants in the water column. Um, trace metals were a, were a major concern. And then there was uh, a need to gather information on organic contaminants like PCBs and DDT. The next type of sampling that we do is sediment sampling. This is another one of our cruises and we've uh, done, done uh, hundreds of, analyzed hundreds of sediment samples in the last uh, 20 years. And sediment is really important for contaminants in the bay because many of the pollutants of concern attach to sediment particles. And because the bay is such an efficient trap for sediments, um, the sediments that enter the bay end up getting stuck in the bay for decades to centuries. Uh, we can still see some of the particles from the gold rush, for example, that were washed down from hydraulic mining. So this means that the contaminants that are attached to these particles also get stuck and lead to very slow recovery rates for contaminants like mercury and PCBs that, that are attached to sediment particles. Um, another important type of uh, monitoring that we do on our cruises is bivalve monitoring. And bivalves are really good for the organic contaminants, things like PCBs and DDT. And they've helped us see gradual declines for these chemicals in, in, in the mussels that we put out in the bay, um, in, the, in the open part of the bay. Um, and we're still watching the declines for those. More recently, we've seen more dramatic and quicker declines for emerging contaminants. Mussels are, are a really good tool for monitoring emerging contaminants. And PBDEs are flame retardant chemicals that accumulate in the food chain. And the concentrations of PBDEs rose sharply in the 1990s and were a cause for a lot of concern. Um, but monitoring of PBDEs in bivalves and other uh, bay uh, indicators have shown declines in concentrations in the past 10 years. So uh, there, the PBDEs is an, another example, like copper, of something where we've gathered information, we've seen declines, and we've also um, done studies to look at how toxic they are and found that they're not, they're not as toxic as we were uh, uh, afraid they were. So uh, the PBDEs appear to be of diminishing concern. Selenium's another um, priority topic for the program and we've, uh, we're ramping up a bit with selenium work to um, support the implementation of the TMDL for selenium in the North Bay and to help set the stage for regulators to decide whether a selenium TMDL is needed for the South Bay. So in all of these cases, we're trying to uh, look further down the road and anticipate what information the managers and the dischargers will need um, so that we, we, we can skate to where the puck will be and so that we can provide a good foundation for decision making when it's time to make those decisions.